Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Megan Glenn and I lead communications and public affairs for Calfi Strategic Solutions, a subsidiary of Calfi Halter and Griswold. I'm here in the Cincinnati office. This is our latest roundtable with community leaders throughout the region and the state. Today we're honored to have Candace McGraw, the Chief Executive Officer of the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport with us today. Welcome, Candace. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for having me today. You know, I always love um, seeing you and I enjoy um, having an opportunity to talk about the airport. So thanks for having me today. Great. If, you, if you'll allow me, I'd like to tell our, our guests today a little bit about your background. You've been an aviation professional for 30 years and have led the transformation of CVG over the past 10 years, reversing a nine-year decline in passenger traffic. Um, CBG is now one of the fastest growing airports uh, in, in the country in terms of passenger and cargo growth. You are recognized globally for your leadership in the airport industry and most recently was, named, was appointed by U.S. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow to the newly formed Women Advisory Aviation Board. Congratulations on that very recent assignment. I also want to um, recognize the overall team. Just last month, CVG was named, once again, the best regional airport in North America for 2020 by London-based Skytrax. This is the seventh time you and the team have won this great award in the last nine years. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thanks for the nice introduction and um, the particular highlight of the team. I think you you know well we have a great team at CVG. And for those um, that are joining us today that might not know, you had been part of the team CVG, oh. really instrumental in helping us form the strategy that is leading to the success today. So, um, you know, once a CVG alum, always a CVG <laughs> alum, I see the CVG pillow in the corner. So. I really want to thank you and your team at Calfi for being good partners with us. Of course. We're honored to continue to be advocates for the great airport and the team there. We have seen some ups and downs. <laughs> and um, when this started, I remember you and I talking in the initial days and talking about resiliency and how important that is um, in all of our industries. Uh, and um, for, for what you and the team have accomplished at, at, at CVG, it, uh, we have no doubt that um, you will continue to uh, right the ship, even with all these different um, dynamics coming at us. Um, and and it, let's start off with a We are all looking to resume normal activities, both personally and professionally. And for so many of us, we're fortunate air travel is one of those, uh, whether it's for, with our family or, or for business. You're on the front lines talking to airport leaders, not only domestically, but globally. What can you share with us about the trends uh, we can expect in the next few weeks and months? Yeah, certainly. Um, just as a quick uh, note before I get into your question, you know, the, the notion of CVG up and down, right? We, this airport has been through it. Um, and this pandemic was a turn, of course, that nobody could have ever expected. You know, airports throughout the world conduct emergency drills and have disaster plans. This is something that nobody planned for. The one thing I know though with respect to CVG is we have such a good team here. We have been through the, the battles together um, and we have a playbook for coming out of um, particularly troubling times, how to build air service, how to rebuild confidence. And so um, I know the great team here will dig in again and take a page out of that playbook and, and we'll bounce back. Now with respect to the kind of industry as a whole, you know, I'm fortunate that I do serve on the world board of our uh, airport group because my international colleagues, particularly those in Asia, went through this before the pandemic came to the U.S. And so um, they've been very kind to share best practices and lessons learned. So we've all been able to, to learn from them. So um, as many of your listeners know, the pandemic really hit full, full force in the U.S. in mid March. At that time, you know, air, air traffic in the U.S. dropped precipitously. You know, we went from, you know, having a record month, you right. know, mid-March mid to losing almost all of our traffic within two weeks. And that's what happened 
globally and happen throughout the US. So, you know, globally, um, the airport industry as a whole is, look, is thinking they're gonna lose about $97 billion this year. Um, globally, they're predicting the traffic will be back maybe at about the 50% mark at the end of this year over 2019 levels. We've done our own analysis here at CVG based on international trends, domestic trends, and we think we'll be back at about the 50% mark by the end of this year, we're hopeful. Okay. Um, you know, global predictions are at, at the best case scenario, about an 18 month recovery time to 36 month. Um, you know, some of my Canadian colleagues and maybe in other parts of the world are predicting it might take us about five years to get the traffic levels back to pre-pandemic um, levels, back to 2019 levels. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been a huge hit to the industry, you know, um, with respect to us locally. We were down about, you know, 96% of our normal traffic volume um, over the course of this pandemic. Um, fortunately, we're seeing a little bit of traffic come back and it's leisure travelers. Um, the last 10 days, we've been consistently at about 85% below our normal level. So we're cheering that, you know, I'm focused on the 10% increase versus being 85% down. And for my colleagues in Asia, they've learned that the, the uh, leisure travel comes back much more quickly than the business traveler, you know, for a variety of reasons we can talk about if you'd like. Great, well, thank you for that. Well, when passengers do return to, in stronger numbers to CVG, um, what can they expect in terms of um, your Fly Healthy Initiative and TSA and, and those other d necessary dynamics? Yeah, one of the things that, you know, our airport and all airports want to do is make people feel comfortable returning. You know, we have to earn back passenger confidence that they can come into a facility that is clean, safe, that we're taking all the necessary precautions. So what um, folks will see when they come into CVG and all airports around the country, um, they'll be asked to wear face coverings. In some jurisdictions, it's mandated. It's not yet mandated. It's not mandated at CVG, but um, they'll be asked to wear face coverings. You'll see all of our employees and all of the airline employees with a, with a mask. Um, as you approach the ticket counter, you'll see plexiglass. Um, so there'll be plexiglass barriers between the passenger and the airline employee. Okay. Um, you'll see that at not only the uh, ticket counters, you'll see that at the gate areas. You'll also see that at certain points at the document checkers at the TSA um, space. Um, when you go to the TSA checkpoint, um, and I would invite all of your listeners to go to our website or if they're traveling to a particular location, go to that airport's website. Um, they'll, they'll have a link to um, some tips on how to pack, what to do, how to be compliant with um, some new TSA regulations. So the TSA um, is looking to minimize contact like we all are, right? So they, they don't wanna hold your documents anymore. They will ask you to screen your own boarding pass or um, you know cell phone with your travel documents. They, they will ask you to hold up your ID. Um, they will try to again, minimize contact with you. They'll ask you to temporarily pull down your face covering just so they can verify your identity. Um, and they really are asking folks to be mindful of how you pack, that their agents don't have to go into your suitcase. You know, you don't want to touch your belongings, and they frankly don't want to touch your belongings. Um, all of those TSA agents will be wearing um, gloves, masks, and eye coverings as well. Um, and as you go through the checkpoint and come up to our concession areas, um, you'll also see uh, the plexiglass at the checkouts at the check-in areas uh, as well. So again, trying to minimize co um, contact and trying to make sure that um, cleanliness standards are in place. Additionally, you're gonna see um, our housekeeping crew out in full force. Well, they're fantastic. E even more so than they always are. Um, 
we'll probably have less restrooms open now than what you might normally have until passenger levels return. That way our housekeepers can really concentrate on cleaning the restrooms well and often. Um, and then the high touch points will be cleaned um, continually. Um, one yeah, thing pay attention for, um, and, and I, I saw it on, on, in the last several months, the Avidbot, do I have that correct? Right, Avabot. So, um, you know, we're really trying to lean into the innovation space and, you know, we have a great uh, innovation team here led by Brian Cobb. And on one of his trips, um, he went on a, a sort of a, an information exchange to Singapore. While at the Singapore airport, he sees this um, uh, floor cleaner uh, that's completely automated that once you sort of program in the components of your facility, they do continual cleaning. Um, and and if, think of it, you know, I'm sort of a Luddite. I think of it as a souped up uh, Roomba, right? It's a, a great okay. cleaning device, um, but, but cleans much better than, of course, um, uh, a Roomba. But it, so we have deployed one of those around the airport and looking at other technology, right, that's going to enhance cleaning and make sure we're safe and resilient uh, going forward. Great, great. Um, there's a differentiator for, for CVG in all this, and it has to do with your, you and your team's long-term cultivation of air cargo operators um, at CVG. And... Uh, that, it turns out, um, must be really beneficial at this stage of the game. Um, not, not only for the airport um, proper, but the local economy. And I know that um, CVG is now the eighth largest cargo carrier in the U.S., I believe. Yeah, eighth in largest cargo carrier yeah, in America, right? And demand for air freight remains strong um, throughout this pandemic. Uh, and it, many of our aircraft operators are trying to keep pace with demand. What is your, what is the team's um, latest focus for um, air cargo? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, cargo is a, is a, has been a huge focus at CVG. You know, we're pleased that we are the um, global super hub for the Americas for DHL. So we actually are their second largest location or second largest operation in the world, only behind their headquarters in Leipzig, Germany, and behind us is even Hong Kong. So their operation here at CVG has been long standing and they're a great partner to work with. Um, as you also know, in 2017, we signed a deal with Amazon and they're building their largest US cargo hub operation at CVG. So um, I think, I, well, I know we are the only two, only airport in the Americas that will have two cargo hubs operating out of, out of its airport. Right. Um, during this pandemic, um, they haven't missed a beat. So both DHL and Amazon have been flying at um, holiday levels. And I know um, uh, one of the uh, companies that flies for them is Atlas Air, wh wh which are great friends of ours, both of ours, and they have been uh, working nonstop over this pandemic. You know, I have joked with it, uh, some folks, I think they're all going to get a restraining out of order um, on me because I keep sending them love letters, right, because they are keeping our airport up and operational and the lights are on because of the cargo operations. You know, normally we run at about 60% in terms of landed weight and in terms of the amount of aircraft that are landed here, 60% cargo, 40% passenger. In April, that balance was completely skewed, of course. We were running at 82% cargo operations. So we're really thankful for that business. Um, you know, the not only for keeping our lights on, but for um, um, carrying all of those necessary PPE items throughout the country, throughout the world. Um, and then all of those packages that are showing up at our homes for those items that we needed to order and couldn't go to the store and get. So it was a huge um, differentiator for us, for this airport. We were actually, we had a record cargo volume in uh, April. We were up 8% uh, 
from the prior April, which was also a record volume. So they keep, they keep um, setting new records here. Um, fortunately, throughout this pandemic, the construction on the Amazon cargo hub has continued as well. And we're looking forward to having that facility up and operational third quarter of next year. So um, it's, it's been a huge differentiator for us. Um, they're great partners to work with. And um, eventually we'll get back to a, a more balanced cargo and passenger uh, balance. But in the meantime, we're very happy with the work that the cargo carriers are doing. Great careers for and they're hiring. Always oh. looking for Talented. Yeah, always hiring, right? There, um, you know, when so many folks are looking for a job right now, I think that's a great career path, a great opportunity, um, a great careers to get into. Um, as we see, you know, what what jobs are going to be important into the future? It's mm -hmm. certainly around supply chain logistics, and um, I know between Calfee and us, we've worked on other initiatives on how we get young people into this field and how we talk about why it's important. And this pandemic only shows that um, having a good supply chain in place is what's necessary to keep this country and this economy moving. Um, so we're, we're pleased that we can provide this site for all of that to take place. No, that's great. Thank you for that. A lot of our um, guests today are interested in, they're already business partners with CVG or looking to become business partners with CVG. Another side angle to this question is networking in the age of, of a pandemic, uh, when when face-to-face -face meetings, coffees, et cetera, um, aren't, you know, we can't do them. But, but how do we get um, beyond Zoom? And, and what advice do you have for companies looking for opportunities um, with CVG and the, and it's, and the companies that, it, that um, it hosts? Yeah, great question. Well, one, I, I hope we get beyond Zoom soon so people get back in the planes, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about this whole substitution method. And, you know, I mentioned earlier that the leisure travel is coming back much more quickly than the business travel. Um, I think one reason is this substitution method seems to work well, um, you know, for quick meetings or people maybe that you already know. But if you want to cultivate business or kind of to get a um, sort of a deeper, closer connection with your with your business partners on a, on a level that transcends a screen, right? You're gonna to have to get back in and play. Um, but that aside, um, for those folks who wanna uh, do business, say with CVG, I'd invite them to go to our website at cvgairport.com. There's a section called doing business with. Um, what we do is we put out all, you can register to do business with us. There's certain, um, areas of interest, you can click on and register. And anytime we um, are soliciting for a contract, soliciting for business, um, looking for bids, um, your company once registered will, will receive any of the information we put out on those particular subject areas. So for instance, if you're a contractor, uh, anytime that we would issue a proposal, uh, issue an RFP looking for that sort of work, that, that proposal will be sent to you electronically. So I, I'd invite everybody to register for that. It's a good way to stay connected. Great, good you advice. Know, yeah, and then we're also, um, you know, we're always looking for what's new, what's different. Um, you know, I invite folks to send emails to us. We'll, we'll figure out how we can connect. And um, eventually we'll meet in person, but in the meantime, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll look at Zoom and, those sorts of uh, items. And speaking of, we have a, a question here from a participant um, who lauds the airport for, for its innovative approach and research and development. Anything uh, that you can share with us um, on the horizon that you're comfortable talking about that, that you, and my, you and the team might be looking into? Um, sure, happy to. So, you know, through this pandemic, we had you know, boots on ground operations folks that made sure we were up operational every day, right? We have a team that was here throughout the pandemic, we never missed a beat that were focused on the here and now. 
We also have another team, right, that is very forward focused, always looking for what's next. How do you take current technology and maybe morph it into what it can be look like in the aviation space um, or what's next on the horizon? So a few things that um, those, those crazy folks are looking at are, um, we're going to actually be trialing something here that I think is interesting. There's, you know, there's a lot of discussion out in the industry about um, temperature taking. And should that be done as we enter our workplaces? Should that be done um, as you enter an aircraft? You know, just, just um, this week, Frontier is going to be taking the temperatures of passengers that they get on the aircraft with those, you know, um, sort of the infrared temperature taker, uh, thermometers. Well, what we're doing here is trialing something just for amongst our own employees um, where you walk through so nobody has to miss a beat, nobody needs to stop, right? And it takes the temperature of your tear ducts, of all things, which are supposed to be much more highly accurate. So we're working with this business partner to be the test site for that. Um, you know, we, we will be the test site of about just about anything if we can figure out how to make it work. Um, and then our innovation team works with those either established businesses or startup businesses on how to keep refining it. We have, you know, something, um, this camera system at the gate, gate areas now um, exterior to the terminal that helps um, um, arrival times of the aircraft and it'll um, document uh, for our folks internally how long it takes to perform the various functions and then we provide that information back to the airlines again how do you how do you make these things flow more seamlessly more quickly those are a couple things also um, in development all sorts of things on how we can get people through the terminal um, touchless contactless how to minimize that right which will make us all feel more comfortable in the future Oh, that's great. We have another question here. They have to be local. Uh, they're asking about um, the construction and the latest on the parking garage. Oh, yeah, perfect. So um, at the entrance to our terminal building is um, a facility. We're building a consolidated rental car facility. So that construction started um, oh, a year plus now ago. Um, we've redone the entrance roadway. Um, and then the, the, in our vernacular contract, the consolidated rental car facility is um, under construction, again, scheduled to open third quarter of next year. Those folks virtually have not missed a beat. Um, our good partners at Messer have, had figured out a way to uh, have their workers work safely um, with all the necessary PPE, et cetera. So that um, project continues on. Uh, it was fully funded prior to the pandemic, so we didn't have any um, fiscal concerns. You know, we had talked earlier, um, folks may be interested, we had talked earlier about kind of the global financial impact of the pandemic on aviation. You know, we've done these projections here at CBG um, based on what our passenger volumes may be. But this year and next, Best case scenario, we'll probably lose about $60 million in revenue over the course of two years. Worst case scenario, we'll lose about $100 million in revenue. So what we had to do here internally is uh, prioritize our capital projects, maybe defer some things for the future. Um, we were able to eliminate all non-essential items out of our operating budget. We actually cut about $20 million out of our annual operating budget this year, went on a hiring freeze. The one thing though that we committed was because we have such a great team in place that we would keep all of our employees um, fully engaged, employed. We'll figure out where they may be doing some work differently than what they've done in the past, but you know, we're keeping our team together and that was very important to us. And to you. Um, thank you, and that is it's incredibly admirable in this environment. As we close out, uh, I wonder if we could revisit um, the the your women in aviation position and and what it, the focus of that. As we've got a lot of participants here who who are um, looking 
to, for workforce development ideas um, and, and keeping active on that front. So tell us a little bit more about, about that new group, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chow, announced, um, I, I think it was probably the end of last year, she was forming a panel of women in all sectors of aviation, uh, airports, air aircraft manufacturers, uh, academics, uh, pilots, et cetera. And so I'd say probably about a month ago, she um, sent the list out, announced who those participants would be. And I was really honored to be included in a group of tremendously accomplished mm -hmm. women I, you know, I can hardly wait to meet. Well, the woman who is serves as the chair of that also is the um, president of the University of Texas at El Paso, former congresswoman. She is going to uh, chair the group. Uh, she's already started to uh, figure out how to convene us, uh, probably, you know, virtually to start. But the goal of that panel is to figure out how do you get more women, particularly young women, engaged in aviation careers? How do you expose them to the whole panoply of careers that are available? You know, I, I started my career as a, as a uh, municipal lawyer in Cleveland. Um, I was working in the city of Cleveland uh, for the city's law department and the airport became one of my clients. Um, but for that happy confluence of events, I wouldn't have even thought about aviation as a career. So the goal of the panel is to expose young women to all of the, the interesting facets of the business and, and figure out how they can plug in at a variety of levels. So I'm looking forward to getting that, uh, working with that group getting us up and operational and reporting back on what those findings may be. Well, that's great. And I, and, and I know you're passionate about it and um, it'll be wonderful to see what comes out of that. We want to thank you again for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate your insight. Um, again, you're on the front lines like no other. And we all, I know, I, I will speak for our attendees. We can't wait to get uh, back in the skies at, at CVG and elsewhere. And thanks again for your time. And I also want to thank um, the team behind the scenes who helped us put this on today. Everybody have a good weekend. Be well. Stay safe. Thank you. Can't wait for you to get back to CVG. Thanks. Thank you.